Well, hello my little beauties and welcome to this tutorial. It's a Node.js tutorial, it's a standalone tutorial and I'm going to be covering how to use module.exports and how to use async await within the context of module.exports. Now, the reason why I'm covering this is because I believe that this is the crux of Node.js. If you can understand this, then you can structure pretty advanced Node.js applications. I have to tell you, I had a look around yesterday and I could not find anybody covering this information. At least not in a way that made sense to me. So hopefully this will help somebody out there. It's going to take me about 15 minutes, but by the end of this video, if you follow along, you will be an expert at how to use module.exports and also an expert at how to use async await, particularly if it's within the context of module.exports. So this is going to basically show you how to structure node.js applications. Let us begin. I have a folder called test and inside this folder, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it main.js. All right, main.js. And I'm going to have a second file a new file. I'm going to call it helper.js. There we go. Now inside helper.js, I'm going to say module.exports equals and then some curly brackets. And so for the, the rest of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create stuff over on the module and then pass it in here. So we'll start with variables. We'll do simple functions. We'll do slightly more advanced functions. And then finally, we'll do the one that you came here for, async await. And like I say, it's, well, did I mention, it's going to take me about 15 minutes to go through all of this, but hang tough and this will make sense. I think this is the most misunderstood part of Node.js actually, which is why I'm taking the time to go over this. So. We'll start off with variables, right? And to kick the ball off, I'm going to say const helper equals require dot slash helper dot js and look out for those quotations, right? Now, let's start with variables. So the goal is to create a variable inside here, a variable like name, for example, and return it so that main.js can access that. Now, the key to this vibe is to forget about module.exports. Just forget about this stuff and look at the curly brackets. That's the clue. Because whenever you're dealing with JavaScript or Node.js, right, and you see these curly brackets, well, it's usually an object, a JavaScript object. And so, if you, if I was to say, right, okay, forget about module exports, how would you uh, declare, you know, a name is David inside an object? How would you do that? Well, you would probably say I would do name, colon, I would do something like that, and you would be absolutely correct. Congratulations. Suppose I was to say, how would you set up an email? Let's say, well, you'd do a comma, email, info, at, whatever you want, .com, and there you go, right? It's as easy as that. So, over on main.js, what we're going to do, and I'll do little comments to keep us all going here. So, I'm just going to say, let, let's call it something like user details equals, and we'll have helper.name, and I'll join on helper.email. So if we just do console.log user details, okay, there's the vibe. And now over on the top right hand side in the terminal, I'm going to say node main.js. Okay, and there we go. Congratulations. Yes, indeed, life can be easy. So we've now got full access to these variables and that's kind of cool. All right, let's now comment this out and we'll move on. The next thing that I'm going to show you is simple functions. 
So how to create a simple function. An example of a simple function, by the way, is something like this. Say hello. And it goes console.log, hello you. All right, pretty simple. So the idea is we want to take a function like this, but we don't want it here. We want it living over here. How do we do that? Well, the way that I like to do this, and there may be other ways, but the way that suits me is I would go upstairs, believe it or not, way upstairs here, and I would just chuck the function in. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is not in any way joined on to this. That's true. But look out, because we can just say comma, say hello, and can you believe it? Now, the module has access to the function say hello. And as a matter of fact, that can now be passed over to main.js. For example, helper.say hello. Going to save it, clear the decks, running it, and look at that. Isn't that fantastic, Ola? So now you know about simple functions, how to create them and how to have them being exported so that they can be used somewhere else. All right, let's do a slightly more advanced function now. So a slightly more advanced function would be something like add VAT. Now this is gonna take in a price. Now, by the way, VAT or VAT is a tax that we get here in the UK. We just love it, you know. And it goes something like this. I'm gonna say let total is price multiplied by 1.2. Uh, you know that this is optional, right? The semicolon. And I'm just going to return the total. Okay? So it's slightly more advanced because it's taking something in, it's doing some stuff with it, and it's going to spit something out. Okay? Slightly more advanced. So, again, we head to our module.exports. I can probably space this up a wee bit. I just spaced it down for clarity, you know, and we say comma, add VAT. Now notice we do not need to do this. We definitely don't need any of this shenanigans. Just saying add VAT is enough. So that's us. And now main.js has access to that. So here we go. I'm going to say slightly more advanced functions. And we might say something, uh, maybe something like this, let total equals helper, add VAT, and I'll add VAT on to 100. And we'll just say console dot log total, and there we go. So top right hand side, clear the decks, run the script. Thank you very much indeed. It's another glorious success story. So check it out. We've only been here about five minutes and already you are an expert at module.exports, which is kind of cool. So we've done variables, we've done simple functions, we've done slightly more advanced functions, and now here's the one that you came here for, async await. Now this will take me about five minutes or something to explain, but just relax, it's easy, and you can definitely handle this. So, async await is something that you can use if you have a chain of different functions that you would like to have firing one after the other. These functions may be synchronous, they may be asynchronous, it doesn't really matter. But the way that we can do this within the context of module.exports is I'm going to say comma and I'll give it a name, let's call it do stuff, right? And I'm going to assign it to async. Then we're going to do parenthesis and in here you add in any variables that you would like to be added into this thing. So I'll just say price, okay? We're going to say double arrows. So that means that this is going to produce something and we're going to have curly brackets. Now, congratulations, that's the difficult stuff over. Everything from here onwards is 
easy because all we're going to do is in this area here we're going to have the different things that we're calling all stacked one on top of the other and it's going to be super easy so let me show you how this works i'm going to say let value one equals and here's the vibe you want to say a weight and we'll just use add vat okay there we go then straight underneath that you stack on your next thing so let's have say value two is a weight add the price to value one okay i hope that makes sense we can head on in again we'll do value three and something like uh, whoops daisy that would be value two and value four i mean i can do this all day you know but at the end of this you would return the final thing whatever it may be and you know the nice thing about this method is that we have access to all these variables here they don't get stuck in some promise chain for example and it's kind of quite a nice way to work it's kind of neat and that's the vibe now let me show you how you would work this thing over on main.js right if we head to main.js i'm gonna say helper do stuff and we're gonna do stuff and pass in 100 right and then dot then we're gonna get something back we will have once we've done that we will have a result okay and with our result we've got curly brackets here i'm just going to console.log the result okay so i'm going to save that top right hand side clearing the decks running the script and there we go pretty pretty cool now as good as this is it's not entirely perfect there is actually some things that we can do to make this even better and let me show you what that would be like okay so if we head up to this add vat here i'm going to do an if statement and well actually to begin let's just do console.log total right so we'll do that clear the decks running and there we go right oh pardon me my phone's making funny noises right i'm going to do an if statement i'm going to say that if the total is greater than 145 let's say then i want this thing to stop for some reason okay so i'm gonna say throw new error and uh, we'll say um you know bad vibe okay otherwise we're gonna do console.log total and we're gonna return the total okay so let's run this keep your eye on the top right hand side and take a guess as to what might happen here we go all right so as you can see it's saying here unhandled promise rejection warning so what that means is that over on main.js we've got this vibe whereby if there's a result then we console.log and that's kind of nice but we have not handled error situations so to do that i'm going to say dot catch and we're going to have a thing coming in i'll just say err for error i'll use double arrows curly brackets exactly the same structure as above and this time console.log err so clear the decks run the script and there we go now that's an improvement that is an improvement but it's hardly perfect because although we're getting this error message and that's nice we've still got all of this horrible stuff going on here and it's kind of not graceful i would prefer if it just said error bad vibe it would be a bit more tidy you know so what we're going to do is we're going to head to our add vat thing and we're going to do some changes now i'll comment this out and i'll paste one in here 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to give you the Ninja Async Await version of ADVAT done properly. And that is to return a new promise. Okay, this promise is going to be resolved, so resolve or rejected. I'm going to do the double arrows vibe, and then inside here, we're going to do that, and we are going to resolve the total. So the structure's a little bit different, and let's just run that. So here we go. Okay, life is good. That's kind of cool. Now I'm going to introduce this if statement again. Going to head up here. Going to go like this, and we'll take the comments out. Okay, tab on in. Right, there we go. And instead of saying throw new error, I'm going to say reject bad vibe. But every, if everything is cool, instead of saying return total, well, we're now dealing with promises, so I'm going to say resolve total, something like that. And now, if we run the script top right-hand side, look at that. Neat, tidy, handles the code perfectly. Let's do that one more time. Look at this. Isn't that fantasticola? And so, to become Jedi level at this stuff, then instead of dealing with ordinary functions that return variables, we want to return a promise. And a promise can be either resolved, which means you may move on, or rejected, in which case it chucks the error vibe onto the screen. So, congratulations. There you are there. Looks kind of cool. And here we are here. So that's that. And that's how you do module.exports. And that's how you do async await within the context of module.exports. Congratulations.